Come here, Robin. Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. And I wanted to take you and talk about a couple things happening in the garden and it's raining. So instead, let's see what Robin's doing in the garage. All right, so we have started, uh, Robin loves to go to the neighbor's house. They don't mind, um, but we miss him when he's not here. Robin is our garden cat. So when he comes, when we call him, I've been rewarding him with some special wet food and he is quite the fan. Hi, big boy. You're eating your dry shoot food, but I gave him some wet food. Hey bud. So while I'm waiting for the rain to kind of die down a little bit, which I'm not mad about it, we went through, gosh, like three weeks of drought. And so now the rain is kind of coming through and we're just getting a little bit every day, but I will not complain because my garden needs it. But what I realized is I never showed you guys the braided garlic. So look at my garlic braid. So it's starting to dry out really nicely. I actually have five of these. I have these over here, I guess six. You can see there were some scapes that I didn't harvest that are drying out now too. But. So braiding garlic was not nearly as difficult as I anticipated it being. And we ended up with a lot of really great sized garlic. It's all drying really nicely. I'm not feeling much rot or anything like that. Um, so what they say, they say that you can only braid soft neck garlic. Now, obviously, I've got some scapes thrown. Only hard neck varieties throw scapes. So I braided some hard neck garlic in here. It seems to be fine. Uh, it's been in here for about two weeks and everything is drying really nicely. You can still dry hard neck garlic. It just doesn't braid as well. Um, but it seemed to braid fine for me. Um, and it's a great, I mean, it's beautiful, first of all. It smells great in here. It's way easier if you don't have a ton of space. Like, it's hard to just lay out a bunch of garlic. So, I am happy with it. I'll let you guys know as we get further along into the season how it ended up. But, hey, bud. You say hi to our friends? You good boy. It slowed down a little bit, so I'm going to try to come out here and show you what we're dealing with. So I finally made it out. This is not gonna be a full garden tour. I will do one of those this week, but um, I just wanna show you a couple of the things that we have going on. I did get out here and finally prune my tomatoes, which I knew I had to do because it's been two garden tours that I've been saying that and you guys were getting on to me and rightfully so, I needed to prune my tomatoes. So I'll show you a little bit what they look like. So I talked about this a little bit in the video that I posted the other day, but you can see these are actually, they still look a little, they still look a little busy, but they're way better than they were before. So what I did this year um, is instead of, normally I would prune down to one stock, I would get rid of all of these little side shoots um, and just let them go up. This year I left some of these more advanced side shoots. I did it for all of them. Um, I did that because I was a little bit late to the pruning game and honestly, I just want to try. I've been doing my tomatoes the same way for a long time and it works really well, but I like to experiment. So I'm trying it out. I'm going to see what my production looks like, letting them be a little bit more full than I normally would and letting them send off these offshoots that then set flowers and fruit as well. So I'll let you know as we get into it, how these end up turning out, but you can see I pruned them pretty heavily in terms of like the foliage. I wanted to make sure there was enough airflow. I wanna try to avoid things like blight um, and some different like fungus issues that we end up with here if we don't do that. So you can see a lot of these, they're, they're busy, but they're not completely full. So I'm, I'm hoping that that works out for us. So that kind of brings me to something I wanted to talk about today. 
There, there's this notion that if you're gonna be sharing, you should have it all figured out. Sometimes I think it's more so something in our own heads, right? Like it's just a preconceived notion that we all have that if someone's sharing, then they should know exactly what they're talking about. Um, but for us, the reason that we wanna share our journey is not because we have it figured all out. I mean, we are only a year into our homestead adventure. Our house is still being built. We don't even live on the property yet. This is my first year gardening in this space. This is my first year gardening with this much space. We do not have it all figured out. We do not know everything about everything, but we feel so strongly that there is value in that. There is value in us sharing our journey as incomplete and imperfect as it is, as we're making mistakes, as we're learning new things. There's so much value in that because you can only watch, you can only watch so many videos of people who have it totally figured out, right? Um, it's encouraging and it's inspiring, but sometimes it feels unattainable. And what we wanna do is offer the other option, right? We, this isn't our full-time life. There are other things going on. You know, I work in corporate America. Um, I love my career and I also wanna be here and I wanna get back to the land and I want to encourage people to live more sustainably and I wanna encourage people to really appreciate and know where their food comes from. And those things can happen in tandem and we're learning how to do that too. We're learning how to balance it all. We're learning how to schedule our days. We're learning how to grow in a big space. We're learning how to raise animals. Like there's so many things that we've never done before. And I think there's so much value for, for you, for someone on the other side of the camera to see, okay, no one starts knowing how to do everything, right? Like that's not where anybody begins. We have learned so much in the year that we've owned this property and we're not even like, we're not even in it yet. Like that we're not even to the thick of it. So I know that over the next five, 10, 15 years, we're gonna learn so much. And I hope that we can look back someday and look at where we started and say, man, I'm so glad that we shared our journey of getting here, right? Because if we only, if we wait and we only share the things that go perfectly well or the things that, you know, we feel really confident in, then it leaves so many people wondering, well, where do I start? And that's how I felt with learning how to milk the cow. I felt like I, I was like, seeking so fervently some content and some information on like, so show me someone who this is their first time. Is it normal that it's taking me an hour to milk a pint because I don't know how to use my hands? Like, I, like, is this normal? And I couldn't find any of that. And so that's what we want to be able to offer you. Um, a glimpse into what it really looks like when you're starting at the beginning. And I know that in five years, it'll look different. We won't be at the beginning anymore. We'll know a lot more. We'll be doing things, hopefully, more effectively and efficiently than we are today. But I think there's value in sharing this part too. There's value in sharing this season just as much as there's value in sharing the next one. And I hope that you appreciate that. I know that, you know, sometimes, sometimes it's easy when you're so used to seeing everyone who just has it figured out and has it all together uh, it's easy to be like well why would you even share that you didn't even do it right like you did it you did it wrong or it died or whatever um and that's why we're sharing it we want to share the hard parts too because that's our reality and that's what we are in right now it's real we're figuring it out as we go and doing things differently, right? Like I, this year I decided not to do my tomatoes how I've done them every year and not to do them how I've seen everybody else do them. I'm letting them be a little bit more wild and we'll see what happens. It might be a great idea. It might be a horrible idea. And hopefully you can watch this and follow through and see how we ended up at the end of the season and know, okay, shouldn't do that or hey, there's another way to do this that might be just as good. So that's what we're here for. That's why 
we're sharing the things that we're learning and inviting you in on this adventure with us because no matter where you are in your story in your journey there's value in appreciating that you're learning and there's value in sharing what you're learning and there's value in supporting each other and rallying behind each other even in the waiting room in the classroom in the periods of time when you don't have it all figured out so welcome that's why i always say that you have a space in my garden because it's not perfect i haven't figured it all out there's so much to learn i have so much to learn when it comes to gardening i have so much to learn when it comes to animal husbandry we have so much to learn when it comes to managing this amount of land there's so much to learn but that's the fun part and if we didn't share that if we didn't offer that to you to to join us to invite you into this space i think we'd be doing a disservice so you always have a space here. And hopefully we'll learn a lot together and maybe kill some plants, but hopefully not. Speaking of killing some plants, about half of you said you thought that this guy would come back. And I think, I think you might be right. There's some weeds trying to get up there under him. But I think you're right because look at this. This, this is still looking really good. It's supposed to be yellow. So that yellow is good because it's a golden, golden oregano I think he might come back so I guess since we're talking about the good the bad and the ugly today I should show you this bed so I don't really want to show you this bed mostly because I don't know what's going on but maybe you guys can help me there are so many of you that have been gardening for years that are just information absorbers and I would appreciate you helping us out so this bed, I'll show it to you in just a second. It's our second 12 by, 12 by three bed. Um, and it is filled with the same compost as all the other beds, same everything, but something is happening to the plants in this bed. It's causing all of my tomato leaves to curl um, and it's not thirsty. Some of the leaves look fine. We added more compost to the top to try to add more nutrients like maybe it was something with the original compost let me show you okay so it's this bed it's the second 12 foot bed if you can kind of get some context of where we are but look at this look at what's happening here what is going on and it's happening with all of them I actually didn't prune these tomatoes because they're clearly not well. And so I wanted to see if we could amend the soil and get them a little healthier before I you know, went to town and did surgery on them. But I, I mean, this, to me, this looks like it has to be some kind of a deficiency, but what kind of deficiency? Google has really let me down. I tried Googling like, tomato leaf curl in because most of them are curling in but then some of them like this one these are all curling down some of the lower growth looks better like it like this this looks healthy this looks fine I'm just not sure what in the world is happening here and then what makes me think it's the soil first of all it's all the tomatoes in this bed every single one of them and then the other thing is that these marigolds same thing I just don't understand and they're setting fruit I've just kind of let them be for now um I need to get in here and tie them up and support them but like I said when I got to this bed when we were putting it all together and starting to support everything I just left it be because I don't know they, they just don't look good so I let them be but the squash look good. Those are Tramoncino squash. They look fine. They're getting ready to start climbing. The cucumbers look good. Whatever I put down here, I think these were Kajari and they, they didn't even germinate. So I don't know. And then I'm not sure the eggplant actually looks kind of sick as well. He's curling pretty severely. So I don't know, this has to be a soil thing, right? has to be a soil thing and like he flowered but didn't set fruit I think neither yeah they didn't set fruit so let me know I mean I know 
someone out there has to know what's going on here. But then there's zinnias. There's zinnias. Let me show zinnias you. look perfect. He looks maybe a little curled, but like, I mean, they look good. So I'm just not sure. I'm not sure if it's some of the stuff is starting to look better because we've remedied the problem by adding, you know, new compost on top. If that's solving the problem a little bit, a lot of the growth that is damaged is at the top. So I don't really want to prune them. I don't want to top all these plants. I don't know if you've dealt with this before and you have a remedy, throw it at me. Um, I, I garden fairly organically. By fairly, I mean I garden organically. You just can't say you have an organic garden unless you do all the tests. But I don't really use any chemicals in my garden. I'll use BT, neem oil, diatomaceous earth, and that's about the extent of it. If I have a problem that just gets out of hand, I let it go. Because I, I want my garden to be a place where my kids can walk in and pick anything out of this garden and just eat it as is and not have to worry about you know, washing or things like that. So if you have fixed this before, let me know. Even better if you have fixed it organically. But if you just know what it is, let me know because it's just so weird to me. I've never had tomatoes act that way. And it's only that bed. And then the other problem child, you can see we clearly need to mow the lawn. It's a little out of control. But the other problem child are these beds. I did not prune these tomatoes yet either. It's on my list. Um, I did drop a bunch of zinnia seeds in here because they hadn't germinated the last group that I did. But these, I have not supported them yet because I need, or I haven't pruned them yet because I need to support them. They're just a mess, both of these beds. And I'm getting past the point of like being able to add a support in here. So I really need to do it as soon as possible. But look at those tomatillos. You see how wonderful those look? They're so happy. And these tomatoes all look great too. I really need to get to these tomatoes. Um, I guess this is just the the bad and the ugly <laughs> part of the garden. Um, you're welcome. But I need to get these tomatoes because these are all of my production tomatoes. So these are my big boy. Um, these are my San Marzano uh, canning tomatoes. Like these are the very, these are the important tomatoes in the garden because these are the ones that get us through the winter. So I have no excuses. I have to get out here and do this. I think what we're gonna do is I have some wooden trellises that we used at the last property in the last garden. I'm gonna try to bring those in and figure out a support system. Um, we were thinking about even going around the outside of the bed, but then that causes some problems with like harvesting. I just, a six by six bed is really difficult to figure out the trellis in. So we're trying to figure that out. That's on the list this week to get done, absolutely, so that we don't end up, um, you know, losing all of our tomatoes <laughs> because eventually like if I don't prune that and I don't support them they will deal with like pest and um, disease and we won't get as much fruit off of them which obviously is not ideal for all of my production plants so I'm definitely going to get back to those. I guess while we're talking about sad things look at this random sick pepper. Everybody else looks great. It's been raining and there's this guy. What in the world? Gardening is absolutely not all glorious. There are lots of things that go awry that I can't explain. I mean, somebody can explain them, but I can't explain most of them. And things that look great all of a sudden take a turn for the worst. And sometimes things that you never expected to survive pull through. And I mean, have I showed you my sweet potatoes? You remember they were all dead? Let me show you. Look at these. They came back. They came back with a vengeance. I mean, not all of them. Some of them are still dead. But look at these. We're gonna actually get sweet potatoes from all of those plants that I thought were goners. Just goes to show. You only have as much control as you have when it comes to gardening. I guess that's a good thing, right? I mean, I'm glad that even if I totally fail these plants and I neglect them or I make a mistake, like put, a, put on compost that maybe is too hot or lacking nutrients or whatever, that somehow some of these plants are going to survive anyways and they're going to throw fruit anyways and it's going to happen whether I want it to or not. All right, the last fail of the video. It's turning out to be a very optimistic video. Look at these these so on my last video I think I said slugs 
I meant cabbage worms. I mean, we have some slugs, I've seen some, but mostly this is cabbage worm damage. We did come out and spray BT, so now there's a lot of dead uh, worms in here. But I think that the damage is done. I'm gonna have to clear out most of this bed. Some of it can stay. This kale, I think he's gonna make it. He's okay. But look at, I mean, some of this dino kale is just probably goner. And this poor plant, like there's, there's probably not much coming back from that. So this is, this is a prime example of what happens when you don't address a problem as soon as you notice it. So one of the things in gardening, my maybe biggest piece of advice is when you notice a problem, if you, it's kind of like with weeding, right? If you see a weed, pick a weed. If you notice a problem, address the problem. Waiting is maybe the number one mistake that you can make as a gardener. And what the mistake I make over and over again, and I'm not sure what I'm gonna learn. It's like the tomatoes, right? I showed you those six by six beds that are out of control right now. I see it, I should address the problem today. They're that way because I've seen it and not done that. The same happens here. I noticed the initial damage from these cabbage worms and I didn't, oh yeah, here, here you go. You can see this guy right here. See him? I noticed the damage and I didn't treat it right away. If we would have gotten BT on these plants two weeks ago, we probably would have been able to salvage them. But at this point, I'm gonna let them go a little bit longer and see what happens, but I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this bed and these brassicas. I probably should have covered them. Like there's a, there's a lot of kind of things that we could have done differently that we didn't do. Um, and it all goes back to, if you see something, do something can't leave you on a completely bad note. I know that I said this was not gonna be a full garden tour, but look at these. So much fruit being set. All that to say, I hope that this doesn't discourage you, right? I know that I just showed you all of the bad things happening in my garden, but I think there's value. Oh wait, I just saw one more bad thing. So let me show you that and then we'll wrap it up. Herein lies the dead asparagus. I don't know what happened to him. There's probably three that look that way. I'm not sure. I'm not sure why they dried up. I'm not sure why they died. Most of the asparagus looks good. I'd say of the 50 crowns I planted in this bed, probably half came up this year. And then some of them just died. It's totally dried out and dead. Kevin just came over here and said, man, plants are fickle. It's true, they are very fickle. He was looking at his pepper. So Kevin's our pepper guy. Hey. He cares deeply about these peppers because he is our canner and our sauce maker extraordinaire. So when the peppers do not thrive, I usually hear about it, huh babe? Yeah, and we've got a problem with this one. I know. What kind is he? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I think it's this way, this I mean, way? that way, yeah. Bell pepper. Pepper. But the bell peppers next to him look fine. Just this one. We don't make sauce with bell peppers typically, but yeah, we put them in other stuff. We do put them in like spaghetti we sauce. We preserve them. We do stuffed peppers a lot. Yeah. Huh. We'll see. You don't know. You win some, you lose some. Sometimes it's easy, right? But when you have a garden this size, it is and you're and you've like jumped into a garden this size right like we're used to gardening on a much smaller scale there's no way we don't have the t we personally don't have the time to research every single thing that happens in our garden to figure out exactly why so a lot of what we're doing is a little bit of trial and error and the comforting thing the thing that i take comfort in is that we're going to get so much food out of this garden even if that one plant dies um we you know, we're not ignorant. We, we know a lot about gardening and I've been gardening for a long time on a smaller scale. So I know how to treat a lot of things and it's almost to our benefit that we're gardening organically because there aren't a lot of things we would do anyways. Like our, our list of options if we have a problem is pretty slim. Um, so it is what it is. We've lost a pepper. Now, if we were losing like an entire bed, this would be a different conversation. We'd be talking yeah. about 
replacing the soil, pulling them up, trying to save them. But in this case, or even in the case of that bed with the tomatoes that they're all curling, we have so many other tomatoes that I'm not devastated over lo losing that one bed. If that was the only bed I had, or if you have one bed and you're having problems like that, the first thing that I would do is probably like skip all of the, what is this? And I would pull everything out and get rid of the soil and start over. Um, honestly, it's probably what we're gonna have to do in that bed because everything is dying. Yeah. It's the first and the most logical step is to check your soil. Well, every year we lose a little, learn a lot. Every year we lose a little, learn a lot. Well, with that being said, thank you for joining us today. You always have a place in my garden. Bye, friends. Bye.